Hey everybody, this is Crazed, otherwise known as Adam. I'm sending this out here uh, because I want to have some real talk with you guys about everything that's going on in this world. And I just want to put this out and hopefully you'll take the time to listen to what I have to say. Test it for yourselves if you want to. By all means, I encourage it. Absolutely, I encourage it. Seek it out. I mean, um, what I'm going to tell you is going to be the truth. So, what's happening? What's going on? Well, as you know, as I'm sure you guys know, that I am a Christian and I am a believer. I'm not... Let's just put it this way. I'm not a religionist. A long time ago, well, I don't say too long ago, but about a year and a half ago, a little over a year, somewhere around there, a friend of mine put out a video. Um, uh, he's put out a video and he said, uh, would the world be better off with religion, uh, without religion? And uh, I'm actually going to answer that. I'm going to answer that right now, as a matter of fact. And the answer may surprise my friend if he's actually listening. The answer is yes. Yes, the world would be better off without religion. And I say that from a relationship point of view. I saw this quote and it just makes sense. Religion doesn't matter which kind. Um, I'm talking, you could be Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's religion. Would it be better off without that? I absolutely 100% agree. Because religion is, as what I wanted to quote here, religion is man reaching up to God. We're trying to do works. We're trying to do this. We're trying to follow rules, etc., 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 trying to reach God. Well, guess what? You can't. You cannot reach God through religion. You can't. But relationship, that's different. Relationship is God reaching down to us. And to be spirit-filled, you can understand that. I mean, think about that for a minute. Religion is us trying to reach God. Relationship is God reaching for us. Now that... If you take the time and think about that, there has been more pain and suffering in this world brought on by religion. Now, I'm not talking everybody and every time because there are so many good people that do follow religion, but they have no relationship. Some do. You know, I'm not excluding everybody in that, but there are some. But they just feel like if they go to church on Sunday and they do this and they, they, you know, go to charities and whatever else, they do all these good things and they're not bad things. They are. They are good things. That doesn't mean you have a relationship. Now, when you have a relationship, your life changes. And 100% for the better. I mean, you are going to have struggles. That's just the way it is. In this world, I have struggles with everything. But I go through them. Trust me. Um, if anybody knows some struggles, it's me. <sighs> um... To put it lightly, uh, my wife and I, we have suffered 
more than you can possibly imagine. There are people that know our pain, and I pray for them too, because man, but if, if the greater my pain is, the more I have to lean on God, the more he makes himself known. Trust me, guys. Um, it's just a story, uh, a quick story. Um, I was going to work one day, and I, ca- I was on a rant. It was just me in the car, because I sometimes just to vent, you know, a lot of my anger with stuff, I, I'll just um, vent in the car. Uh, that way, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm just letting the stuff out, you know. But I was sitting here having a conversation with God, and I was not happy about what was going on. And then literally, literally, I turn this corner, and I see two giant hearts in the sky. I mean, they're in clouds, you know, whatever else, but they were perfectly shaped like hearts. And I just just shut me up right there (laughs) I'm sure God would listen but and listen to what I have to say and you know and then he just does something like that and just like you know what I love (laughs) you but you need to let it go you know that's what he does I actually have not shared that story with I think I've told one person that, so it's kind of, you know, because I did not want to share that too much, but it just knocked me on my my butt, and I was just like, oh, wow. And I apologized, and I was sorry, and that's relationship, guys. That's relationship. Religion is different, so yeah. To my atheist friend, man, I I love you. And you might, and knowing your analytical mind, I can even see you saying, well, that was just a coincidence. Yeah, maybe. I don't believe in coincidences all that much. And that's just one story. That's just one story. But on to the real meat. On to the... Until, you know, we're getting past the the veggies. Let's get to the meat. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot going on. If you follow the news, even the fake news. um, (laughs) Yeah, I just called it fake news. uh, Even that, there's always a bit of truth in it. I mean, the best way to lie is to hide it in truth. Um, So you tell part of a truth, and then that makes a really effective lie. But even in that part of the truth, you can see what's going on in this world. You see, as a matter of fact, back to the Bible, Matthew 24. Now, I like that, that chapter a lot because it, Read that chapter. As a matter of fact, I probably gonna sh- I should just post it. Um, but read that, and it, it is so amazing as to what uh, is explained there. Here we are. The very first thing Jesus says when he talks about the end of days. Now, there is no end of days, guys. That's just not going to happen. But the end of grace, end of the grace period, is going to happen. Now... When he talks about that, the very first thing he says, the very first thing, I want to make sure you understand how important this is. He says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Let me ask you guys, you buy a a box of cereal, whatever. When you look at the ingredients, do you know how they order that? The importance? 
Well, the most, or the ingredient with the most amount is always first. I think that applies here. The first thing he says, I mean, this is the very most important thing is, do not be deceived. Take the time, look at the truth. Even if you are a believer in, in sorts and you don't, you may be deceived and question it. Ask for discernment that you may tell the truth. You can tell the right from wrong. But that's the first thing he says. And then, of course, we have all these news channels and everywhere that are putting out propaganda. Period. They're putting out propaganda. I mean, just look it up. I mean, I'm not telling you this like, oh, I'm, I'm making it up. Look it up for yourselves. Check it out. Because it's, it's propaganda. They want you to hate the world or they want you to love the world and hate Christ. Period. And by loving the world means that you are actively committing and doing things that are wrong and con and. Um, condoning them and it's like yes that's a good thing now here let me tell you the truth again guys uh, again another bit of truth is uh, and I want to talk about sin here because you know what a lot of preachers and pastors and whatever else they don't want to talk about it but it's important <sighs> I don't understand. People go to church and they do these things. And like I said, this is religion for you. It's like, oh, I am holier than thou. I am, I am not committing that sin. Um, and when I talk about like things like homosexuality or um, transgenderism or any of that other stuff, any of it, Sin is sin, guys. It doesn't matter what it is. The only difference between that and you is the kind of sin. Period. If you tell a lie, even if it's a little white lie to, to not hurt somebody's feelings, it's a lie. It is not the truth. If you hate somebody or you're angry with somebody, you committed murder in your heart. Yeah, but I didn't do it. It doesn't matter. God looks at your heart. If you looked at another woman or a man in lust, you committed adultery. God's standard, we can't meet, guys, period. So the only difference between the other sins and your sin is that it's just different. Sin is sin. It doesn't matter. When you go to court, you go to, I mean, I'm talking man's court, the court of, court of the land. You go to court, what do they send you there for? Do they send you for the good things? Or do you go there for the laws you've broken? It doesn't matter what it is. You go to court for the law you broke. You, you could do a thousand good things and you did one bad thing. But you don't go to court for the good things. I, I don't know if you guys understand that. But that's the way it is. It doesn't matter what people's sins are. You could, you could be doing anything and... and if it's a sin, it's a sin. It's equally damnation. But that's religion for you. I'm better than that person because my sin isn't that one. I think that would be called pride. Again, another sin. <laughs> Huh. 
I know this is kind of it's kind of a long video, but you know what? I, I just really have to get this out. And I just want you to understand that. Now what's it mean when you're in a relationship with God? Oh man. If you are in a relationship with God and you truly commune with Him and pray and repent from your sins that you've done, there's nothing better. There really isn't. And, and it's hard to, it's, it's really hard to explain this to you guys. It's, it's, it's really hard. Um, but I've seen a quote, and i use another quote here, um, that makes sense to me. Christian faith, I mean, true relationship with God may look, it looks like a, what I would call a live wire, like an electrical wire. It doesn't look like there's much to it. You know, it's just a wire on the ground until you touch it. That's what it's like, guys. It's just, it's got so much power, so much energy, so much, I mean, it is crazy how awesome it is. It is, it is absolutely amazing how awesome it is. And I hope you've listened this far because this is what it is. I suffer every day. I ain't going to lie. There's days when I have a hard time leaving my house um, due to what I've, I've been through. And, and people that have suffered the same pain as me, they know how this is. They know. But through the grace of God, I am able to do what, I, what most can't. I'm able to continue on with my life as best as I can. I mean, I still struggle, guys. There's no doubt in my mind. But man, it is just so amazing how much I have to lean on God. And God comes through. Even when I'm not looking for it, He comes through. I mean, it's just so awesome and it's so real. If you have it in you, you understand this. As a matter of fact, it specifically says that if you do not have the Holy Spirit in you, there's going to be a lot of confusion. You are going to be easily confused and deceived. I don't, I don't make it up. It's just you're going to be of sound mind with the Spirit Like I said, guys, this this is this is amazing. Um, to have a real relationship with God is something that you don't want want to miss out on because it is so good. It is so amazing. Everything else that um, we see in this world, and that's that's you know. <laughs> I'm going to go a little, uh, I mean, this is kind of me rambling anyways, but I just really want to say this, is that what if, what if the world lived like Jesus one day? If the world lived like Jesus lived, everybody in the world Think about that. Everybody would be forgiven for what they have done. People would go out of their way to love each other. Worshiping the Lord. The Creator, the Father, the beginning. And the end. And that's... And I don't understand. I mean, I kind of do because religion, religion steps in. Unfortunately, it steps in. It says to forgive. The Bible does. 
And they ask, how many times should we forgive somebody for their transgressions? Should it be five times, seven times? Jesus said, seven times, 70 times. You forgive them as much as you possibly can. Now, that doesn't mean you go out and uh, everything's okay. When you forgive people, guys, I mean, trust me, this is amazing when you forgive people. And I'll talk about that here in a second. But when you forgive people, you don't like, like say somebody take, you, you give somebody your car for the weekend and they trash the car. Yeah, you forgive them. But you don't give them the car keys next weekend. You know? And that'd be just stupid. Forgive. It doesn't mean you forget. It doesn't mean you're stupid and you're just going to hand stuff over to them. But you do forgive them. And that's a big deal, guys. I can't even tell you how big that is. And like I said, forgiveness is amazing. And it's not... It's... it's oh, I just wish I could make you understand. Um... Forgiveness isn't for them. For whoever wronged you, it is not for them. It is for you. It is. When you forgive somebody, uh, whatever they've done, whatever they've done to you at any point in time, when you forgive them, you say, Lord, I'm not going to carry this anymore. I'm not going to hold that in my heart anymore. I forgive them. I mean, think about that. When you forgive somebody, you don't carry that anymore. Whatever wrong they did. And I've seen people, I know people that have a hard time with forgiveness and they become angry. They become bitter. And uh, it's not good. Because that starts reflecting that comes out of their mouth and comes out of their heart and it gets colder and harder because they don't want to be hurt anymore. And I understand you don't want to be hurt anymore. Nobody wants to be hurt. But there's no reason to carry it with you. When you are hurt, let it go. And that's what's amazing about forgiveness. And then once you forgive them, pray for them. I know, right? That's weird. <laughs> God says to forgive them and pray for them and bless them. But sometimes that's not easy. Trust me, I know. It is not easy. But once you do, I mean, pray for it. Pray for help and to forgive because it is not an easy thing to do. No matter what I say or what anybody says, forgiving is not easy. It may be a daily thing that you're going to have to do for a while before your heart truly gives it up. But it's so amazing when you do. It is. And that's really what I want you guys to understand more than anything is that a relationship with Christ is not it is not boring it is not it is it is not fruitless People are afraid and I understand when they look, and this is what I, I believe is the case, and I can understand this, is when they say, if I give my life to Christ, what's going to happen? I can't do this, and I can't do that, and, and I can't do whatever. Guess what, guys? That's religion coming in. That's religion. But relationship means... I don't have to do that. I don't have to do this anymore. That stuff is taken out of your life. 
all that stuff, whatever it is. I mean, we all have our sins. We all have our idols. We all have this. And that stuff, it, God works with you. He loves you so much that he wants to work with you and make you better. And trust me, once you start walking the path of having a real relationship, You think to yourself, why did I hold on to that so much? This is so much better in every way possible. I mean, let the, let the Spirit guide you in that. And trust me, He guides me. <laughs> Sometimes it's not in a good way either, but He guides me. When I say that, I mean, it's always in a good way when it comes from God. But when I know I've done something wrong, he lets me know immediately. I mean, I mean instantly, I know I've done wrong. And I try to repent for that and make, make uh, apologize and whatever it was that I did. That God lets me know. He lets me know. But, I don't know. Um, back down to it, I guess, is right now, this is uh, September 10th, 2017. And what's coming on and what's happening um, in this world. I, I do want to talk about that because some of you may or may not ever read or hear about this ever again if you don't watch this video. Um, that's why I want to put this out. And you may. You may go, well, that seems interesting. At least let me go check it out. But one of the things that it also talks about in the end of days or the... And, and first off, let me say end of days. There is, like I said, there is no end of days. Days are going to go on. But it's going to be the end of this world. This world will... Uh, it, it's got pain coming. It, it's coming, but... That doesn't mean you are without hope. If you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you are... You are not without hope. You feel pain for those that suffer. But you yourself are not without hope. And that's what's amazing. It doesn't matter how bad this is going to get because it's going to get bad. We have two more hurricanes staring at the United States. We've probably got earthquakes coming next. This country is going to get rocked. And we got fires out west and, and everything else that's going on in this world. And to have Christ in your heart, you you feel... It's, it's kind of hard to explain this, but you understand. I guess that's the best way. You understand what's going on and you understand that this is the signs. This is what's going to happen. And it's not, and let me say this too, this is not God saying, you know what, I'm going to cast my wrath upon this nation because of whatever. No, 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 God doesn't work that way. He doesn't work that way. What happens is, is a nation has kind of rejected God. This nation has rejected God in a lot of ways. Just look at the news just look at it. I mean, even the fake news. I mean, just look at it. it. It is pretty much nothing but us rejecting God. And what happens when God is rejected? Well, he doesn't say, well, I'm going to force it on you. No, God isn't like that. He's caring. He is love. And what do you do when you truly love somebody and they reject you? I mean, truly love, not like a lustful and whatever else. And, and that, he, when you truly love somebody and they reject you, you back off. You let it go. 
you say, okay, I mean, I love you, but if you want to be by yourself or do what you want to do, I'm going to let you do that. I'm going to let you do that. And what happens when God backs off? When God steps away, that's when the others come to play. And that's when death, destruction, kill, steal, whatever else comes to take its place. And that's what we see. It, trust me, it's not God that is sending this. It's not that's sending all these heartaches and these pains and etc. This is us rejecting God, not the other way around. I know it's 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 different, and, and you. I'm going to almost bet, depending on you know where you're at and where you've you've learned anything from this, is that you've probably never heard anything explained like this before. Because a lot of people don't talk about it. Pastors don't talk about it. I know my personal pastor is in, I mean, I like him. I like her. You know, it's just, when I went to church, it just felt empty. It, uh, it felt like, oh, we're going to have a good message today. Um, and it was, you know, it was a good no, but that was the end of it. That was the end of it. Once, you, once you, you go there, check in for an hour, and then you walk out, and then pfft, you're done. You're done for the, the, the week, and then, well, that's it. <sighs> I know, I know. If you're still listening to this, I, I, I do. I say thank you, and God bless you guys, because it is not without hope. But nowadays... Um, I am going to talk about one more thing at the end that I do. It's, it's where I get my hope. It's where I can face these tragedies knowing that it's all going to be okay. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about one of the other things that they said, and it is there is going to be uh, during the last days, there is going to be wars and rumors of wars. Guys, we have rumors of wars all day, especially with North Korea. We got um, Russia and Iran uh, sitting on top of Israel. We got, um, of course, civil wars that they're talking about, even in this own country. It's practically being split right down the middle. And again, I don't understand, but it, that's the way it is. It is being split. And for what? But people have been lied to. Like I said, the first thing Jesus said was, do not be deceived. Don't be deceived. So... We have that, wars and rumors of wars. We have um, Ebola. We have uh, AIDS still running around. We have this and we have that and cancers and whatever else, guys, and super germs. Our antibiotics are not being able to work anymore. Even the super antibiotics that they've come out with are really half-half or 50-50 on being able to work anymore. I mean, this is the way it is. And we kill babies on an untold scale. The abortion in this country is unreal. And I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, that's just another thing. On to another thing here. Um, and this is what you're going to see. I'm going to let you know. 
it says in the Bible that says this, that there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. And guess what? That's happening. The total eclipse. Um, talked about a little of that earlier. There is online videos for that to talk about the biblical connection. There is a lot of biblical connection with that total solar eclipse on August 24th. I'm sorry, August 21st. That you would not believe. It, it's just too much to be coincidence. Um, and on top of that, uh, we had a partial lunar eclipse. Uh, not, I want to say two weeks earlier. Like August 7th, something like that. Um, so sun, uh, the sun is casting out solar flares. It just did the largest solar flare in, uh, in a long time. I couldn't tell you the exact date, but I know it's been a long time. The largest solar flare. We have earthquakes, and it says there would be earthquakes in various places. Guess what? Earthquakes are on the uptick. They are on the rise. Uh Mexico just had one, 8.1, I believe. Um, and then there was mysterious lights in the sky afterwards. And it's just so much weird stuff. So much weird stuff going on. And you, you, if you know any bit of the truth, I mean, I absolutely encourage you, look it up and then compare it. Look it up. Investigate it. Because it's going to be crazy. What you see. And then you're going to realize, well, maybe. And if you question it, if you at least question that it, what I say is the truth, I've done my part. <laughs> but on to the next thing. Um, like I said, the stars. There will be signs in the stars. And then people are going to tell you this. Uh, those that are of religion, they're going to tell you this. It's like, oh, that's astrology. No, it's not. No, it's not. Astrology is the perversion of astronomy. It is the um, devil's tool, more or less. But in the very first book of the Bible, uh, Genesis chapter 1, I think verse 14, something like that, it says that the, bio, or that the sun or the stars are going to be put there for signs and seasons, uh, etc. It tells you that the stars are going to be for seasons and, and signs. Specifically, Jesus says there will be signs. So there is a big sign coming, and I'm talking huge. This has never happened for 7,000 years, and it's going to happen. Guess what? It's going to happen this month. As a matter of fact, in 13 days from the time I'm recording this, September 23rd, 2017, the Revelation 12 sign. You don't know what that is? I'll give you a brief synopsis of it, but trust me, it's really unlikely that this would have happened by coincidence at this exact time in history. Um, but there are videos online. Look it up. Revelation 12, September 23rd, 2017. Uh, Steve Cenciati's, uh I can't tell, pronounce his last name, uh, Discover Ministries has that out there. He does a really good analytical uh, video of it. Um, definitely would uh, check that out. But the Revelation 12 sign, basically what it, it's describing a, a constellation. Um, what it says is that Virgo, the constellation of Virgo, is going to be impregnated. And like I said, this is the synopsis of it. This is a very quick version of it. And she's going to give birth. And she's going to have the be clothed in the sun and have the moon at her feet and have a crown of 12 stars. Well, it just so happens that on the, just above Virgo's head, there is a... Another constellation, Leo, which just happens to be the lion, which lion of Judah would be Jesus. But on that crown, there's only nine stars. Uh, Leo only has nine stars. However, three wandering stars or planets, but they did call them wandering stars back in the day. Um, they are come right into alignment. I think it's Mercury, Mars, and Venus. I want to say it's these three 
a perfect alignment at September 23rd, uh, 2017, exactly the same day that Jupiter, which has been inside Virgo's womb area, it's been a retrograde uh, orbit, so it hasn't moved really outside that womb area where Virgo's womb would be, if you understand that. And it <laughs> comes into perfect alignment as Jupiter exits and is birthed. The chance of this sign happening is astronomical. And at this exact point in history, because right now this world is going crazy. What this sign does or says is basically Israel, which would be kind of like the woman, is about to birth her child, which if you guys don't know, Israel... Uh, is uh, of course a Jewish nation, but their child would be the Christian nation. So the child is about to be birthed. Now, what all that means, I don't know for sure. Um, but it is exciting, and I can't wait to see what does happen. It may not be immediate. I mean, just like the eclipse wasn't immediate, but it definitely showed... <laughs> showed up a lot of things as soon as it happened um, literally four days afterwards um, but that's that's part of it there um, and like another thing here with the eclipse I mean, I'm just this is brief stuff man I'm just want you to take the time look it up look this stuff up uh, the eclipse happens exactly uh, 44 I'm sorry 40 days 40 days from uh, the eclipse to, I think it's Rosh Hashanah, which is the Feast of Trumpets. Now, if, I don't know if you guys know this, but 40 days is des generally designated as a time of repentance. And I'm really hoping that we are going to repent as a nation and come together and love each other. That's the big thing. If we repent as a nation and lift our hands and eyes up to God, there's it's going to be amazing, guys. That's all I can say. What's going to happen? I don't know. All I can know is that God does amazing stuff. And the more and more I study it, the more and more I study the Lord and what he does is he takes he takes the most unlikely and makes them great. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's time and time again. He does this and he does it in amazing ways that just you're like, there's no way. There is no way. This would happen. Uh, but God does. And that's what's amazing. So there is stuff coming, Lars. There is stuff coming. But like I said before, I'm not worried. Whatever happens, I know God is in control. So what do you do? Uh, number one, I hope you've stayed less long and listened to me. <laughs> so, what do you do? What's gonna? What do you do for this? Well, it's pretty simple, guys. God did all the work for you. You don't have to do anything except to receive it. That's it. All you have to do is take the time, humble yourself before the Lord. And receive his gift. So what is his gift? His gift is actually life. Abundantly. That's his gift. In all ways. Even as you live here, he gives you life abundantly. I wish I could 
I wish I could uh, uh, let you feel what I feel. But I can't. You have to take the time and do this yourselves. It's so easy to do. Just sit down. Say a prayer. Let me guide you. Lord in heaven, I know I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. I have sinned against others. I ask you to forgive me for those sins. And I ask you, Lord, help me forgive those who have done me wrong. I'll give you a minute here to let that come into your heart. And as I forgive them, Father, Bless them. Bless them in every way. In wisdom, in truth, and open eyes and ears that they may hear. Lord, Father, I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. And I seek you out. I ask you right now, Lord, bless me, fill me with the Holy Spirit from top to bottom. Come into my life. Be my King, my Savior, my everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Guys, I do hope you took the time to say that prayer. And if you are scoffing right now, trust me, I, I'm okay with that. I understand skepticism. Trust me, I do. I was in your shoes. But I challenge you. I challenge you right now. If you are going to do that, say another prayer. And this one's a little different. This is for the scoffers and whoever else. And have doubts. Doesn't matter. Challenge God. Say, God, I don't know if you're real. But I ask you to reveal yourself to me if you are. It's that simple. That easy. guys this this is not a joke this is this is the real stuff and for all my friends my online friends i do hope you've taken the time and listened to this because time is short i don't know how short but it is short <laughs> and i say this like i said out of love and compassion Because I don't want anybody to be caught off guard by this. I know. You might say, look, oh, that crazy Spartan, he's kind of crazy. Yeah, well, that's okay, because I love you, no matter what. <laughs> so... Even my atheist friends, if you're still listening, dear God, I pray you are. And at least challenge God, because time is short. I want to be with you in the kingdom. I, want, I do, no matter what anybody else says. And I want to be with you guys in the kingdom. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more death. No more disease. No more hate. Why would you not want that?
Anyways, guys, I thank you so much. Especially those that have listened to the end. May God bless you. And I love you. This is a crazed. A.K.A. Adam. I'm out of here.